Good morning, and welcome to Hillcrest Congregational Church, United Church of Christ. Whoever you are, wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Today is Sunday, August 9th, 2020. We continue with our worship theme, Beguiled by Beauty. And our focus for this Sunday is on the beauty of a world without a why. We will first hear the news of community and then prepare ourselves for worship. Greetings, I'm Neil Miniata, your liturgist for this Sunday, August 9th service. We'd like to start out with our weekly announcements. I hope you'll join Virtual Fellowship Hour this Sunday at 11 a.m. Instructions on how to join in the conversation were emailed on Saturday, August 8th. This week is the 75th anniversary of the bomb dropping on Hiroshima, August 6th, and Nagasaki, August 9th. There are many events online to remember these days, and two, most importantly, renew our energies toward eliminating these weapons of mass destruction. The world's faith traditions have raised up this issue for your prayers. You can go to www.voices-uri.org. Again, that is www voices-uri.org for presentation speaking to this issue. Sunday school will take place again this Sunday afternoon. If your child hasn't yet participated, contact Allison Keekley Silva for further information. Zoom links are emailed weekly to families. You are invited to join the conversation next Wednesday, August 12th at 4 p.m. as Adult Ed continues its exploration of white privilege. This is a safe environment to explore deeply held attitudes and beliefs. Information on how to join through Zoom will be sent out early next week. Thanks to the 34 participants who attended the virtual Hillcrest annual meeting on August 2nd. We extend our gratitude to all council members who agree to continue their service for another year and welcome Christy Cano, the new at-large member. A special thank you to outgoing co-moderator Rico Duran and heartfelt gratitude to Katie Colbeth, who, along with co-moderator Amber Williamson, is continuing for another year. The Hillcrest Community Food Pantry continues to be open Monday, Wednesday, and Friday mornings with rigorous safety protocols in place. If you wish to donate food, there is now a table in front of the food room, and donations are welcome from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. on the days the food room is open. Hillcrest office hours are Monday. Wednesday and Friday from 9 a.m. to noon. If you need to or want to come by the office for any reason, we strongly recommend that you make an appointment with the office ahead of time. Safety protocols need to be followed for the protection of yourself and others. Please see the written news of community emailed to you Saturday for more details about safety protocols and for information about how to contact Carol Mila Reese, Allison Keekley Silva, or Reverend Fred. And now, let us quiet ourselves and prepare for worship.
When we accept the non-utilitarian goodness of life, a world that doesn't need a why, we tune into the raw delight in the world. We experience that life is its own justification. Abundance and beauty are all around. As we let go of how everything must relate to us, serve us, benefit us, we begin to appreciate all things and all things working together. Our desire for the flourishing of all intensifies and we stop measuring our own flourishing against manufactured and misleading standards of beauty and success. We begin to see with God's eyes. invited to a moment of quiet rest, a time of slowing the pace of your body and mind so that the spirit can settle. The chimes will call us to a prayerful meditation. Divine Goodness Holy Spirit, pause us for this moment. Bear us up in this time. Hold us for eternity. We tune our spirits to truth. We begin to let go of expectations. We allow all beings the fullness of their own beauty. We use this silence to draw close to you. When you're tired and feel you can't get through Uncertainty comes over you Just look around When your problems seem too much to bear Unsure if there's someone who cares Just look around Where the strange 
to enable family or friend On each other end of times we can depend Look around, kindness, love is ours to share We can see it everywhere Though it may seem like forever Look around, even in our darkest night Things are gonna be alright We'll get through this together Just look around We tune our spirits to truth We just heard we begin to let go of expectations. We allow all beings the fullness of their own beauty. And so we pray. O God of beauty, O God of fullness, O God of creation and of ongoing creating, we thank you for our faith community Hillcrest and for all the ways you bless all who we are and all that we do. And we thank you for our partners in ministry here and around our nation and world, thanking you today especially for these partners so dear to us. For Reverend Jeff and the Korean Methodist Church on our campus, which he has served so faithfully. Bless him and his family at this time of creation and continue to bless their church. And we thank you for the Interfaith Council of Contra Costa County and for all the individuals and groups who work together through the United, Na uh, United Religions Initiative and the Parliament of World Religions to lead us and our world this past week and today in recognizing the 75th anniversary of the dropping of nuclear bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. To gather us together with each other and with your spirit and with your call to peace so that we can eradicate these weapons from our world, so that we as a world may move from planning for destruction to planning for life together in your blessed creation. And we pray for all who are ill or recovering from illness and injury, including Anne, Ariana, Betty, Dennis, Ron, and web, and all we name aloud or silently now. We pray for our world, and in particular our nation, in this time of pandemic, and its need to work better together among people, politicians, and medical experts and providers. And we pray for our world, and in particular our nation, at this time long overdue, for a reckoning with our racist past and present in order that we may be the democracy and the land we claim to be for all of our citizens and residents. We pray for our own city, Pleasant Hill, thanking you for all the ways we succeed together and thanking you for being with us in the challenges we face as we meet this Wednesday, August 12th, for a virtual town meeting on social justice and the role of the faith community. We thank you for the joy, even in these times, of birthdays and wedding anniversaries and for all we celebrate. We thank you for all the joys of sharing your love and abundance, and we thank you for your Holy Spirit, which comforts and guides us. And we ask that your Spirit be with us now as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Sometimes it can be hard to see Life is full of possibilities So look around Each and every day is such a gift Embrace it and the life you live And look around Outstretch arms and many helping hands Don't give up on all your dreams and all your plans Look around, kindness, love is ours to share We can see it everywhere Though it may seem like forever Look around, for even in our darkest night Things are gonna be alright We'll get through this together Just look around This week, we're continuing our search for beauty, looking for all of the beautiful things in God's creation. And you might have noticed something a little bit odd with some of the pictures in this week's service. Did you see maybe rust, maybe garbage, maybe worms, things that you wouldn't necessarily think of as beautiful, maybe even things that you'd think are gross and ugly? How can that be part of our search for beauty? Well, God doesn't necessarily see beauty the same way that we do. Can worms be beautiful to God? Well, worms play an important part in the ecosystem. They take dead and rotting things and turn them into soil that new plants can grow out of. What I'd like us to do this week is look for something in our lives that we might typically think of as being gross or dirty or ugly, but that serves a really important purpose in making the earth beautiful. Take some time to appreciate that thing. Take some time to try to see it the way that God sees it, as beautiful. Because the beauty of the earth doesn't just mean one thing. And I'd like us to all pray together. So please repeat after me. And adults, please join in as well. God of goodness, thank you for making this complicated world. Making it beautiful, even when we can't see it. Help me to help you to find the beauty in all of creation for the beauty of the earth. Amen. Last week, we introduced the practice of self-acceptance, self-love. Maybe you drew a heart on your mirror to remind yourself to see beauty in that person that you gaze at every day. Maybe you chose to spend silent time with your palms on your lap, contemplating, lifting and releasing those expectations and messages about what and who you should be. This practice is so very important that this week, you may want to explore how you can make it a lifetime practice. How would your life change if every day you said to that person in the mirror, look at you, so beautiful, dearest, so beautiful. Believe this voice of the divine lover for the beauty of the earth. The Song of Songs is biblical poetry at its most lush. Adoration for another. Adoration for nature. Adoration for God. All is beautiful, yes? As is the relationship and connection to and for one another. Arise. From what? For what? And come away. With God to experience God more deeply.
Our first reading is from Song of Songs. The voice of my beloved. Look, he comes, leaping upon the mountains, bounding over the hills. My beloved is like a gazelle or a young stag. Look, there he stands behind our wall, gazing in at the windows, looking through the lattice. My beloved speaks and says to me, Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. For now the winter is past, the rain is over and gone. The flowers appear on the earth. The time of singing has come and the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. The fig tree puts forth its figs, and the vines are in blossom. They give forth fragrance. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. And our second lesson is from Psalm 85. It's not too long, it's beautiful, and it's powerful. The psalmist writes, Let me hear what God the Lord will speak, for God will speak peace to the people, to the faithful, to those who turn to God in their hearts. Surely salvation is at hand for those who have reverence for God, that God's glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Faithfulness will spring up from the ground and righteousness will look down from the sky. The Lord will give what is good and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before and will make a path for God's steps. May God bless our hearing and experience of the word. Amen. Jesus to go with me. I want Jesus to go with me. All along my pilgrim journey. Oh, I want Jesus to go with me. Jesus to go with me all along my pilgrim journey. Oh, I want Jesus to go with me. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. So the last line of our reading from Song of Songs today. Do we have any romantics here? I hope so. Poets or those who like to listen to poetry being read? To them? Any lyricists or songsters or simply those who like pop music? 
This reading from the Song of Songs is for you. It's for all of us, even those of us who don't know it yet. Arise, my love, my fair one, my beautiful one, my darling, and come away. That's one lover talking to another. That's God talking to you, to us. Now, how to get into this. Let me mention two lyrics or poems from two different periods. First, any Nora Jones fans among us? I like Nora Jones a lot, especially her earlier soft jazz trio sorts of things. The song, Come Away With Me, is on her first album, or her first officially released album anyway, and it's great, worthy of the Song of Songs. Was this Bible verse, Arise and Come Away, an inspiration for her own Come Away With Me? If it was, great. If it wasn't, well, that just shows the power of the universal spirit of connection and relationship that knows no boundary of time or place. And now, what about the poet, the so-called cavalier poet of the 17th century, Robert Herrick? Anybody? Robert Herrick? Any English literature majors here or poetry geeks among us? Robert Herrick is great. Google him if you don't know him. He's sort of a mix of Mick Jagger and Bishop Desmond Tutu all rolled into one. He wrote some of the most risque poetry produced in the 17th century. Some of it's still pretty risque by today's standards. And he was a priest. And apparently a perfectly sincere, honest, and faithful priest at that. His Come, Come, Corinna, Let's Go a Maying, or any other number of his poems, well worthy of the Song of Songs. Great stuff through the ages, connecting our most human selves with our most divine selves. And perhaps that's the simplest and best way to understand the Song of Songs and our lessons for last week and for this week. Connecting our most human selves with our most divine selves. As we saw and played around with a little bit in last week's sermon, Preachers and teachers and worshipers and worship planners have wrestled with and worried about and been inspired by these texts from the Song of Songs for 3,000 years and counting. What are these verses doing in the Bible? Are they simply love poetry from one lover to another? Well, I'd say yes. Or are they profound, deep, metaphorical truths about God and about God's relationship to us and the world? Well, I'd say yes. And through the ages, when a preacher, or teacher, or worshiper has answered no to either of those questions, they're missing the point of this wonderful poetry and of its place in the Bible. Now, through the magic of the Internet, I'd invite you, if you'd like, to pause now and go back and listen to today's first reading again. Look at the words themselves if you'd like, or just listen. Close your eyes and imagine the scenes and the actions described. Feel them. Feel how you feel when you feel them. Go ahead. I'll wait. Just hit pause and go back. I'll be here when you're done. So, did you listen to it again? Song of Songs, chapter 2, verses 8 to 13. Did you let the scenes described and the actions and blooming and blossoming described just wash over you? Did you feel it? Did you feel how you feel when you feel it? Fun? Enlivening? Nice? Special? Like being on vacation? Like going away? Or perhaps better, like entering into a deeper, fuller, more special place and a special relationship with the lover, with the land and the living, growing, blossoming, jumping, blossoming, jumping, grazing things of the land, with God, with all the above.
And now I want to come back to Nora Jones and to her song, whose title might have been taken right from our reading, Come Away With Me. Again, great song, great images throughout. Some could have come right from our reading, and some are clearly pulled from our contemporary world. I want to go to this line within her song. Come away, where they can't tempt us with their lies. Come away, where they can't tempt us with their lies. Who are they? What are their lies? She never says. But I think the lovers in the Song of Songs would know. And I think Moses or Jesus or Mary Magdalene or Ruth or name your favorite biblical character or spiritual ancestor. They know lies and liars that tempt and lure us away from life and the life-giving ways of relationship with God, with others, and with the whole of creation. What the Song of Songs and what so much of the Bible and of religious practice is about, as we've seen throughout this worship series this summer, is connecting and seeing, seeing with God's eyes. And as we said, such seeing has little or nothing to do with physical sight. It has everything to do with experiencing the world as our creating, redeeming God does, and as God calls us to do. Don't get tempted, stuck, trapped, hoodwinked, caught short by the lies that they tell you. You're no good because of how you look or where you come from or what you have or haven't done. They're no good because of their skin color or their accent or who they love. Or it's no good because it has no recognized economic purpose or value. No, all lies. What the Song of Song asks, and what so much great poetry asks, is where do you find beauty? Where do you find inspiration? Where do you find God and all the occasions for love and connection that God is calling you to? Well, let's go to our other Song of Songs worthy poet to help us with that one. The poet and priest Robert Herrick in that classic poem that I was talking about above, Corinna's Going A-Maying. Herrick writes, Come, my Corinna, come, and coming mark how each field turns a street, and each street a park, made green and trimmed with trees. See how devotion gives each house a bow or branch, each porch, each door, ere this an ark a tabernacle is. Isn't that great? Each door is an ark of the tabernacle. Holy. Who or what is on the other side waiting to be discovered, waiting to discover you? And it goes on, one line, more beautiful, more inviting than the next, until the poet says, Can such delights be in the street and open fields and we not see it? Can such delights be in the street and open fields and we not see it? And the answer is, terrible to say, yes. As Jesus tells us, as the lovers in the Song of Songs show us, as one prophet after the other, and as one creation story after the other in the Bible show us, the answer is, such delight, such beauty, such glory is in the streets and is in the open fields. And so often, so tragically, for ourselves, for others, for the world and for the world's ecosystems and all its creatures, so tragically and so painfully, we so often just miss it. We just don't see. We just don't see and experience God in him, in her, in it, in them. We don't see and experience God with them. As we bring this reflection to a close for this Sunday, I'll let our psalm reading for today, the great Psalm 85, have the last word. 
Surely salvation is at hand for those who have reverence for God, that God's glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet, righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Wow. Surely salvation is at hand for those who have reverence for God, for those who see and feel and experience and recognize the presence and active ongoing creating of God all around that God's glory may dwell in our land, it says. That God's glory may dwell in our land. Let it be so. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Let us take with us that full, multidimensional, God-blessed and God-infused notion of peace with us wherever and however and with whomever we go, experiencing, knowing, sharing God's peace, God's wholeness, God's abundance, God's completeness in all that we say and do. And let all of God's poets, songwriters, and lovers say together, Amen. Amen. Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. My comfort, my shelter, tower of refuge and strength. Let every breath, all that I am, never cease to worship you. Lord, all the earth, let us sing power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. I sing for joy at the work of your hands. Forever I love you, forever I'll stand. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. Offerings are part of the way we can bind up the broken and affirm the worth of all, with outstretched arms and many helping hands. In the spirit, we offer our gifts. Please continue to give by sending in pledges or offering through the mail or giving online at www.hillcrestucc.org. Your gifts help to continue the vital work of our ministries to care for each other, our community, and the world. Please remember to take care of yourselves and each other. We are all brothers and sisters on this planet. Together, we support one another and support the work of our church. Let us pray. Beloved Creator, help us clearly see beauty in all of your creation, including ourselves, without expectations, without judgment. Bless our gifts that they may help others know their own beauty and that they are held in your loving light. Amen.
Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Alleluia, alleluia. Praise God the source of all our gifts. Praise Jesus Christ whose power uplifts. Praise the Spirit, Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Spirit, Spirit of gentleness, flow through the wilderness, calling and free. Spirit, Spirit of restlessness, stir me from blessedness, wind, wind on the sea. You moved on the waters, you called to the deep, then you coaxed up the mountains from the valleys of sleep, and over the from your slumbers and rise on your wings. Spirit, Spirit of gentleness, blow through the wilderness, calling and free. Spirit, Spirit of restlessness, turn me from blessedness, wind wind on the sea. You swept through the desert, you stung with the sun, then you guarded your people with the law and a land. When they were confounded by their idols and lies, then you spoke through your prophets, to open their eyes. Spirit, spirit of gentleness, blow through the wilderness, calling and free. Spirit, spirit of restlessness, stir me from blessedness, wind, wind on the sea. the bondage of sorrow, the captives dream dreams. Our women see visions, our men clear their eyes. With bold new decisions, your people arise. Spirit, spirit of gentleness, blow through the calling and free. Spirit, spirit of restlessness, stir me from blessedness, wind, wind on the sea. You call from tomorrow, you break ancient schemes, from the bondage of sorrow, the captives dream dreams. Our women see visions, our men clear their eyes With bold new decisions, your people arise Spirit, spirit of gentleness, blow through the wilderness, calling and free Stir me from blessedness, wind, wind on the sea. We just sang our blessing. As beloveds of God and each other, we know that God calls us from tomorrow to break ancient schemes, however stuck we might feel or feel that our world is. God calls us to dream dreams, 
cause us to see visions and to clear our eyes. With bold new decisions, God's people arise. May the goodness of the Creator, the companionship of the Christ, and the insight of the Holy Spirit infuse your life and the lives of all you touch with love and beauty. Amen. And as we pass the peace of Christ, one with another and with the whole world, let us take the words and the vision of the psalm with us. Surely salvation is at hand for those who have reverence for God, who see and feel and recognize God's presence and ongoing creating all around, that God's glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. May we be so kissed. I invite you to say with me, to all who are worshiping with us, and to all you have on your own hearts and minds, and to our whole world, say with me, the peace of Christ be with you. And respond and also with you. Amen. Our service has ended. For those of you worshiping on Sunday morning, August 9th, 2020, know that we will be gathering at 11 a.m. for a time of fellowship. The information to join that meeting via Zoom has been circulated. If you've not received it or have questions about it, please email me now at revfred.hillcrest.com at att.net. Go in peace. Shelter in peace. Experience God's wow and beauty in others, in yourself, and in the world in peace. Amen.